Okay, we're back live at VMworld 2012. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE.com. This is theCUBE, our flagship telecast. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise, and I'm joined with my co-host Dave Vellante, um, and we're here with Todd Nielsen, CUBE alumni. When we first launched theCUBE in 2010, VMworld was our first breakout show. Todd, you remember, you did a press conference with Compellent. Uh, we were in our main hallway. Yeah, we we uh, were we, upstairs at the front door because we weren't sure if it was going to be big and yeah. if it was going to take <laughs> off. And, and now you guys dominate the hangout space. <laughs> the only thing more popular than theCUBE is a little Rock'em Sock'em Robot game. Well, there. You, you can understand why. Yeah, yeah and, and we're excited <laughs> to have you. You're certainly a great guest who provides a lot of signal from the noise, and uh, you're now in charge of all the developers and, the, and essentially the app, when I say app, the developer side of it, which is huge for you guys. You guys have made a lot of progress over the past two years on filling in the components of the overall vision where Spring Source was the first real, you know, telling uh, signal there, you brought those guys in, big developer focus, you got Cloud Foundry, you got a lot of developer action going on around VMware, and we were commenting at the end of day one, and kind of our day one wrap up that, um, the observation that this is a new VMware in the sense that, one, we're in a modern era of computing, data center, uh, sure. network data center, the new experiences, abstract, pool, uh, yeah. automate, it's operating system, things we talked about in 2010, um, but it's just, it's, it's more than VMware now, right? Yep. So, um, I know you guys always had kind of more than, but now it's more than VMware, multi-vendor, so developers are a big part of that. So my first question is, um, give us a quick sound bite on VMware's uh, strategy with developers, and we'll go into some specific questions around the use cases, big data, and then the networking data center. Sure, well, a, a couple of things. So one, uh, applications drive infrastructure, and in this disruptive state of the cloud era that we're in right now, we know that winning the hearts and minds of developers is critical to the long-term success. So when people ask about, well, what's the revenue contribution for your group? Uh, I always say, you know, the revenue contribution isn't significant at the moment, but when people look back 10 years from now, they're going to say, wow, VMware was successful because of the foundation and all the work that we did with developers to help them be successful driving uh, infrastructure like, like our staff. And, and, and VMware is a great ecosystem and, and community. Always had that, it's always been vibrant and opinionated. You know, we, we, we see that all the time. Yep. Um, but now we're in a modern era with Flash dominating the storage layer, we're calling it data infrastructure. Uh, and you guys are driving into, uh, with the SDN, software defined networking now, moving to the data center. Has that changed the kind of target audience that you want to reach out to beyond your traditional developers? Because um, you got net ad, network admins now, you have a whole, you got big data exploding. Um, sure. how, what's your view there? Sure. Well, the other thing that we've done is with the Spring Source acquisition, which you mentioned we did in August of 2009. Um, prior to that, we didn't really have much presence in the open source community, and in the developer world, open source is table stakes to be, you know, you have to have a seat at the table um, by being an active participant in that world. And now we're a tremendous um, participant and, and uh, uh, provider of technology into this ecosystem. One of the things we demoed on Monday, in fact, was some open source code we codenamed Serengeti, yep. which is about helping Hadoop um, really run well in a virtual environment. So, you know, reaching out to that community and being an active participant where you're not, you know, um, tagged with the, or striped with the capitalist pig mantra, but instead you can be, oh yeah, you understand the good for the developers. Well, the OpenStack announcement and, and, as yeah, well. Right? Absolutely, the OpenStack announcement, I mean, lots of really exciting things happening. So yeah, that, that Serengeti piece uh, is interesting. It, it, from an application standpoint, do you see those worlds coming together, the big data analytics feeding the transactional applications in a way that's going to drive new types of of value to enterprises. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, last year we did a study at the beginning of um, the year to, and we wanted to find out who's doing stuff with big data. And so the team went and they came back and said, oh my gosh, you wouldn't believe it. You know, we found companies like eBay and Yahoo and Google and, and I was like, no, we don't want inside baseball. <laughs> I want real customers. And at the beginning of last year we couldn't find anything. They came back then um, about VMworld timeframe last year and found wow, we can't find a company that's not doing something with big data. Now in our opinion, big data is kind of like cloud was three years ago, where everybody has a proof of concept, but no one's really comfortable in saying what it is or defining it. And so when, I, when someone says they have a big data proof of concept, I generally ask them, so what are you doing? Or tell me about it. And their response is, I can see the fear in their eyes and they go, well, it's big. 
really big. <laughs> and so we have a little bit of just definition and, and specificity in the technology that's going to play out. But I'm going to see all kinds of new types of applications where people want to understand how to get closer to their customers, how to actually generate revenue. And so the types of deals we're seeing aren't the classic cost reduction types, but it's how you can generate well, we new just had, We just had Javier on who's talking about the endpoint being multiple devices. Absolutely. And so with big data, one of the things that we're seeing in terms of how, how people are using it, kind of the low hanging fruit, if you will, is the analytics, right? So yep. analytics is like the classic iPad sales pitch. Yep. A mobile device or iPad or Nexus 7, I can run my business on it. So, but that's a developer mind shift. So, so Yavi was talking about like, hey, developers are think differently. Don't take that bloated app and put it here. How are you guys targeting this new breed of developers? How are you going out there and what, what are you offering them with tools? Is there a specific new shift that you're seeing? Can you comment and give us your perspective sure. on that? Sure. Well, in, in that particular case, we're doing a lot of outreach. We've um, doubled the size of our evangelism team that's focused not just on Cloud Foundry and vFabric, but really reaching out and driving developer awareness. And then second, by things like Serengeti and some of the investments we're, uh, we've made with, um, we've acquired a company earlier this year called Cetus. And I believe you're going to have Moodoo or someone yes, uh, yeah, that's uh, right. uh, yeah. later on today. Great guys, great um, guys. So we'll be talking about what we can do there with um, you know, real-time analytics as a service. Uh, we've got some uh, cousins over on the EMC side of the house in the Green Plum division, which is really focused on um, big data. And we do a fair bit of work with them and, and jointly reaching out to the developer community. So it, in the early days, it's get the developers um, educated on what's possible as well as and get the line of business understand, okay, what's the real business value? Because at the end of the day, you need the business value and the technology to meet for it to really take off to be a killer app. And that's a piece I have to say, I mean, I love the messaging, but, but I have to say, the, the abstract, the, the, the pool, cool. the automated, yep. that's, all, that's all great, but at the end of the day I go, eh, what's right. the business value? And right. that's really, you're kind you of the head of business value yep. At, yep. at VMware, right? Yep. So, so what I'm looking for, Todd, and I'd love your point of view on this is, that next wave of applications is going to take advantage of all that great infrastructure, Flash and all these cool things yep. that are happening to really drive productivity. Um, you, you and I, when we first met, we talked about, it was in the, in the, the depths of the recession, and yep. you said to me, hey, VMware's doing its part. We're hiring yep. like crazy. We said, yep. yeah, this is a VMware-driven enterprise economy. Yep. Are we going to see the point with these new applications that IT actually becomes an area where CEOs say, wow, I got to invest in that. I'm actually going to spend more in that. A ab absolutely, we're starting to see now, uh, if you look at like the retail environment, um, people are trying to identify how can I track um, my customer's behavior? How can I learn more about what they want? Another uh, large customer of ours that happens to have a lot of theme parks is trying to figure out how they can effectively get people through the different rides and through the parks and make sure they, they maximize the experience. And it's a revenue generation or a um, positive experience generation for them, not a cost reduction. Um, if you think about you know, mobile, Javier was on. Um, just two years ago, we saw the first app where you could take a photo of a check and deposit it in your checking account. I mean, that's like, wow, yeah. that's yeah, crazy right, stuff. That, right? and, and yet, uh, we're going to see more and more of those kinds of applications enabling users to do things and be more um, connected on whatever their device is to, to, to do their life. Mm. So, uh, Todd, my question, my next question for you is, uh, a personal perspective with a little bit of VMware color, if you could, because you've, you've been with VMware for a while, you know the culture, you've seen where it's coming, where it's going. Um, with, the, with the acquisition of Nasira, uh -huh. it introduces and validates software, which obviously we've been talking about, we believe is huge, in the data center. So on the big data side, I think of that as above the stack, analytics, mm -hmm. apps, mobile. Yep. Uh, and using data as a developer environment for the end user experience. But below that, you got the infrastructure. Yep. So, well, we were asking Steve Herod, there's a new breed of developers because software resonates. When someone says, hey, software defined data center, it's going to create huge new opportunities. How do you view that? What's your perspective on that market? It's an emerging market, it's growing pretty fast. Uh, it's changing the equation on the infrastructure side, yep. enabling more change, and that's yep. going to affect the, on the top of the stack. What's your perspective uh, and, and VMware's view there? Yeah, so th the thing about the developer community is a lot of people, if they, they aren't close to it, they just think, oh, they're developers, so that you know one developer is the same as another. <laughs> but you really need to then understand the taxonomy or the segmentation of the different types of developers. There are your classic enterprise developers, there's classic guys that build applications, and then the folks that work in the infrastructure are generally more kind of system software type folks that are writing device low drivers, lower level um, type um, utilities guys. and functionality. <laughs> e even lower than that, it, it's 
as far as the types of, of things they're building. So the best example is, um, I spent many years er early in my career at Microsoft, and when you would go to a Microsoft developer conference, and then you would go to an Intel software developer conference, yeah. I was like night and day. Yeah, they're completely <laughs> different people because you know they talk the, in hexadecimal. Yeah, well, and the Intel folks are thinking about device drivers and lower level stuff that that the Microsoft uh, developers you know weren't necessarily talking about. And so a lot of the layer one or the infrastructure um, software developer outreach we have is for these systems developers that are really going to take advantage of some of the um, you know bandwidth acceleration and cool networking and cool storage and, and really taking advantage of some of those uh, opportunities. Yeah, uh, like Flash. I mean. That's that's, we're yeah. very excited about that. You know, just, just to get back to the thing we're talking about, the driving that business productivity. I mean, orders of magnitude change in the Absolutely. way people are thinking about this. You, you know, Gartner had a study recently where they, uh, or had a statement, they came out and said they believe that over the next three years, the chief marketing officer in an enterprise is going to spend more on technology than the CIO. And the point was, there's just such opportunity to reach out and get customer intimacy and understand what's going on, that that's where there's going to be a lot of technology investment, whereas the, the cost reduction stuff will continue, but it won't be as... as well, the Facebook IPO didn't you know, you know, do it, <laughs> yeah. so, so it's got to be something like that that <laughs> yeah. really drives it. Maybe the enterprise can so, do that. So Todd, Wikibon, Wikibon did a research study that, that um, a year and a half ago on IO-centric infrastructure that really kind of set the, the table for what we're seeing now with IO-centric infrastructure, Node.js on the top of the stack, yep. and then all going down with Flash. So we had a quote on theCUBE yesterday that Flash has changed the developer landscape. It's a developer's dream. A lot of persistent memory, um, a lot of access, so from program center, a huge developer surge yep. with Flash. Yep. And you think at the top of the stack with Node.js and things on the cloud side, is a completely phenomenal uh, movement. Yep. Um, the question is, is that are you guys offering certain parts of your stack as an enablement to those developers? Are there specific new things that you're seeing um, in the enterprise to take advantage of, say, Flash? Yeah, so a couple things. So from our perspective, th at the developer platform layer, we want to actually be abstracted above it, and so if Flash is, th is there, we want you to, or to have it to be you know, less latency, faster, better performance, et cetera. But we don't want it to actually change the programming model. But, so to answer your question, we are seeing a lot of interest in um, Flash and some of these new innovations to enable developers to build applications that can you know, take advantage of some of these benefits. So, so although I, if, 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 if I could, you're saying you want to preserve the existing programming model, although there are examples where the, the programming model is changing and it's driving like orders of magnitude of new business value. So absolutely. You see those two tensions pulling at each other? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. There's, there's a classic, what I'll call a web slash client server programming model, and yeah. then there is a cloud slash programming model. Yeah, okay. But in this cloud programming model, we don't think whether Flash is there or not should, yeah, 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 should, should be, yeah, should yeah, be yeah, an right, impact. Right, right, right. Um, relative to Cloud Foundry, because that's attracting a lot of developers, and, and like I said, a lot of the developers who are software, traditional software developers, you know, Rails, using sure. Cloud, and they don't want to deal with configuration management, all that stuff. You bet. Um, so, um, what is the impact to existing applications in your mind that you're seeing? And, and, and let, let me rephrase it differently. What disruptions are you seeing in the developer ecosystem right now that are really holding out for you right now? You can see saying, that's a real disruptor and, and VMware's moving on that. Yeah, so there, there's two big ones. One is the, the enterprise today is mired in the complexity and cost of classic application server hell. Um, dealing with, you know, web logic and web sphere, just have them held hostage uh, from a cost structure, a lack of agility, responsiveness to the business. And so there's a lot of enterprises that are saying, help me get out of this. And so we have an offering called vFabric, which is really helping them, if you will, for, get themselves lifted out of that, that morass and, and into a lighter weight, more agile framework. And then longer term, there's a vision for what would it, what will it mean when I can just build my applications and not have to worry about the underlying infrastructure at all? And Cloud Foundry or Platform as a Service is really focused on that situation where developers today at the, in the average enterprise spend anywhere from three to six months writing IT tickets 
trying to provision the right hardware and middleware and yeah. databases and message queues and all that stuff. And you know, developers I meet with say, get me out of that. I, I know how to write code. I don't want to become an expert in procurement. <laughs> and, and, uh, and, and so that's, I think, is gonna where the promise of so, Cloud so Foundry is. So if I can just kind of um, summarize that. One was application server hell. That's the, yep. that's the agility piece. Yeah, getting so more agile. modernize the Moder application. Modernize, right? really modernize about the about. applications. But yeah. when you usually say that, some people say, oh, from the mainframe. And, and I don't actually mean from the mainframe as much as the, you know, the classic the app model. server, you know, yeah. the, the, the web model is... Uh, is so, so agility, totally buy that's yep. awesome. And what's the second one? Is Cloud Foundry? Productivity. Developers can focus on just building their apps yeah. and not have to get mired in the underlying... Um, that platform that pl allows platform. you to... Yeah, it, it's back to the, if you think about it, abstract, pool, and automate is a message that not only applies at, at the infrastructure layer, but it also applies at the developer layer. Yeah. Developers want to write their code, and then whether it runs on Amazon or whether it runs on OpenStack or runs on vCloud, we've been, we've been We've been saying uh, since 2010 when we first saw the original picture, we were like, obviously, it's an operating system. Maritz, Gelsinger, Wintel, you yeah. know, that was a fun little co cl clever comment. But now actually, yeah. you know, abstract, automate, abstract, pool, and automate. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds like the same thing. So the question I want to ask you is, Obviously the world's moving into this kind of environment where software's now going to be part of that. You got Flash, you got new apps coming in, all that stuff's happening, agile, more productivity. Question is, what has surprised you the most over the past 24 months? Something that you didn't see that just exploded and changed some of that original thinking, or maybe tweaked it, sure. changed the trajectory of it. What, what was the big surprise for Todd Nielsen this past 24 months? Uh, two things, one, the device proliferation has been unbelievable to me. Um, there was an article recently in Vanity Fair, and I, as I mentioned, I was at Microsoft. I was there for 12 years, and I was, I'm a proud alumni. Sean knows it well. And there was a comment in the, in the article that I literally had to put the thing down and say, no way, and go check the fact. And the statement was that five years ago, Apple built one product, and that one product has generate, or generates more revenue per quarter than the entirety of Microsoft Corporation. It's an amazing and stat. And the, the one product was the iPhone. And the fact that one product generated five years ago that's you know, more revenue than all of Microsoft Corporation was unbelievable to me. So, so. I, so I got, so I, this is good, I got to ask you this. So Vanity Fair wrote the article called The, the Lost Decade from yep. against Microsoft. It was kind of a, I mean, they put they glob of some failures and they strung it sure. together and, and hung as a really negative piece on Microsoft. And you know, to give Microsoft credit, it wasn't really a, a lost decade. But I do want you to comment on that from your perspective. Over those 10 years, obviously Microsoft still makes a lot of money, sure. but new markets emerged. So what what's the real story there in that lost decade? I don't want you to talk about the stack ranking, all that normal stuff. Yeah. HP did that, and that's a normal thing. But like specifically Microsoft, what what, what happened there and what could they go to going forward? So um, a friend of mine uh, a year ago sent me a, a, a joke that said, what, what does MSFT, which is their ticker symbol, stand for? And he said, it stands for missed search, phone, and tablet. <laughs> and the challenge that, uh, yeah. that Microsoft had in the last decade really wasn't um, what they did with Office or Windows. I mean, they, they were able to continue to extrapolate and, and grow and get a tremendous amount of you know, revenue and, and success there. It's just they missed the next level of innovations. They were in the, the driver's seat to be leaders for phone. And the fact that Android and iOS came out on their watch is, is crazy. Mm -hmm. Tablet, they had a great opportunity. Search, Lord only knows they should have done well there. So there's a lot of things that have taken off in the market yeah. that they, I mean, arguably virtualization is another space that, sure. um, if you had told me, I left in June of 2000, and if you had told me that some company would slide underneath windows between it and the hardware and encapsulate that space, I would have said yeah. you're on drugs. Completely changed it's, the enterprise it's, it's, yeah. market. I, mean, I would say, I would say that's yeah. impossible. So David Flynn from Fusion IO, who you know, has yeah, been sure. very successful since they've gone public and continue to grow. He said his biggest challenge is the status quo. Yep. And, and I think that's really what your point is. And, and they just got, they just missed, they just didn't look yep. at it. Yep. And didn't see it as a threat. And, and that's just, you know, as Pat Gelsinger says, you're not out in front of the next wave, you're driftwood. So, yep. so that being said, VMware, you guys are constantly uh, out in front. Joe Tucci said on the CEO panel, yep. um, the horizontal's getting shorter and the vertical growth's getting steeper and change. So what are you guys doing right now as, from a change perspective, managing that? As a management team, you and your, your cohorts, what are they, what's the VMware culture like and process and share some inside 
uh, knowledge yeah, or perspective? It, it, it's, it's hard. I mean, there's so much disruption. Usually there's change in, on one vector, but on every vector, in every layer, there's so much change going on right now. It's, mm. it's challenging. And so one of the things we're trying to do as a management team is just communicate more. Because as long as your employees can see where you're going directionally, then when we do some of these shifts, they don't seem quite, you know, what the heck was you know, the executives thinking? Uh, a great example is um, the, the NYSERA acquisition. Um, had we not been clear that, hey, we really believe in the software-defined uh, data center, our vision there, folks would have said, what? What, are you, what, what, you're spending that kind of money to do what? But it, you know, most employees went, hey, that's a logical adjacency, it's something we can you know, really extend our um, expertise and IP into, and, and makes a lot of sense. Final question, because I know we got to get to our next guest. Um, on the developer front next year, you're overseeing that whole vision. You mentioned open source, you mentioned hiring great talent with 70 engineers from this era, dynamic ops, these are great acquisitions among the other ones you've done. You got a lot of work to do. Yep. What's your outlook for the year, your goals for the year, and then how do you see the developer community, community shaping for the kinds of categorical developers, obviously cloud, low level, right. and the mix of your business relative to those? So I, th I think we'll see um, more movement in this app modernization that we talked about with vFabric. I think that's got great momentum. Uh, one thing I didn't mention is in Q2, uh, we did the largest deal in the history of VMware was a vFabric deal. Which when you think about it, it's pretty incredible. Yeah. The largest deal in the history of VMware, of all the products, but was, was vFabric. Um, so I think you're going to see Revenue size? Revenue size, okay. yeah. Um, second, I think uh, platform as a service market is going to continue to evolve and shape out, and developers are going to, we're going to see um, more things move into production and lots of excitement there. And then third, the, the union of big data and mobile and new experiences and new types of applications. I predict that probably next year we'll start to see some of the, the new killer apps um, built on our architecture and our infrastructure that will, uh, that will really be exciting. Todd, you're always a great guest. We really appreciate you coming on and taking great. the time. Yeah, thanks, okay. guys. Todd, great yep. job. Thanks. And you create an enabling infrastructure, good things will happen. Uh, Todd Nielsen, president at uh, VMware, heading up all the developers. This is theCUBE. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break.